Now I want to create another mask to isolate the woman that's over here. But obviously in this state, I cannot see her. So I want to look at the incoming footage of the GMAS Tracer. So if I go to the viewing flyout, I can go to GMAS Tracer input and I can choose media front or I could have hit the F1 key. The F1 key is the hotkey for your media front inputs. So now we can see the incoming footage. So two hotkeys I use quite often when pulling mats or pulling keys and masking is the F4, which allows me to look at the mat output, and F1, which is the incoming media to the tool. So F1, F4, very commonly used. So now I want to create a mask to isolate this woman. So I'm going to go over to my node bin once again, and this time I'm going to take the G mask and I'm going to drag and drop it into the schematic. Now, if you remember when I created the G mask for the male talent, I double clicked on the mask inside the bin and it created the mask. And then I came over and I drew my shape. But now with the woman, what I just did was I picked up the mask, dragged it up and into the schematic. If you drag a mask from your bin and you go over a viewer, it's going to create the mask and place the center point where the cursor is when you drag into that scene. I'm bringing this up for a point. All three methods will add a mask to your scene, but what's going to be different is the center point of the mask is going to be in different locations depending upon how you've created the mask. Notice the mask that I just created is still selected and its center point is in the center point of my frame. My tool is the draw shape tool as I would expect. So if I come in here and I create a very loose kind of mask around that, something like this, okay? Now, the mask has been created, but as I mentioned, because I dragged it into the schematic, its center point is over here. It's in the center of your frame. But when I double click, on the G mask to create the mask and then I draw my shape the center point is going to be in the center of the actual shape that center point that I'm referring to is actually the axis that is controlling the transformation of the mask so for example if I come and I start to rotate this mask now notice that it's rotating based on the axis that is in the middle of the frame let me hold control and click in that field to set it back to its default zero but if I select the axis that is part of the G mask over here and I rotate it, it's going to rotate around the dead center of the mask itself. So that's just something to keep in mind when you're creating your mask. Now, it doesn't mean you can't alter and change the center point of the mask once you've created or where the axis is. With it selected, if I come over to where it reads offset axis over here on the right hand side, I enable that and then I choose center. It's going to automatically center that axis into the center of the mask. So this is just one of those gotchas to a new user of Flame sometimes when you're creating the mask. You're not understanding why your axis, your pivot point for the shape of the mask itself is being placed in the center of the frame or it's being placed in the center of the actual mask after you create it. Or, as I said, if I make sure I have no mask selected and I take a garbage mask and I drag it into the scene, that pivot point, the center point of the mask is right where my cursor released it. Okay, I don't want this mask, so I'm going to hold the Option key, drag the axis and the mask itself to the bottom of the UI to drag and drop it. All right, with this viewport active, I'll hit F4 once again so we can see the two masks are working together inside the GMAS Tracer. And it's also a good habit to name things to keep them organized if you want. So I've got my G Mask 1, which is for the guy selected. To rename this mask, I come down to here in the UI where it reads Object, and you see there is the name. I can get rid of the 1, I'll put an underscore and capital letters Guy, and then I can select the second mask that I created, come back down to that field once again, underscore Girl, or whatever you want to name it, just so we have some visual understanding of the masks as to what person they are affecting. All right, let's select this viewport and hit F1 to see the media front, the incoming footage. And I scrub my playback here. We can see that he starts to walk forward. So we obviously want to animate this mask to follow his movement over these 39 frames. Be honest with you, it's really not a big deal. We probably could animate that very easily by hand. We could come over here under the G Mask Tracer menu. You see a bunch of different options here, set key, delete key, hide, group, and so on. And there's an auto key option. When I turn it on, it becomes yellow and highlighted. And now if I transform this mask in any way, it will create a keyframe. Well, first of all, that's not the mask I want to animate. So let's make sure we select the right mask we want to animate. 
and then I can start to manipulate the shape of the mask. When you do set a keyframe and you're on that key and that frame, there'll be a yellow line underneath the parameter that the keyframe is on. If I use the right arrow key to move forward one frame, you'll notice that you see the blue keyframe indicator there at the first frame, and now in the parameter, it's a light blue color. That's indicating that this parameter has a keyframe, but we are not currently on that frame where the key is. We step back one more frame, and I'm going to hit Control Z to get rid of that keyframe and that transformation. Let me turn off Auto Key because I do not want to create the keyframes manually. I want to introduce you to the tracker and how we can track this mask very easily inside the GMask Tracer. Make sure you have the Axis 1 selected, the one that is attached to the Guy Mask, and then come down under Axis 1 and go to the Tracking tab. Here we're going to see a couple different options. As far as the mode, we can use the standard tracker, we can use a stabilizer, or a planar tracker. For this situation, it's really straightforward. We're going to use just the standard tracker. If there was rotation and scale, you can enable those, which would give you extra tracker points to use to calculate the rotation of the scale of the movement. But this is a pretty straightforward horizontal move. So I'm just going to click on the button that reads Enter Tracker, and we step into the tracker. I'll zoom out, control space bar a little bit. The default workflow is a tracker box has been added exactly where the center point of the mask is. That's why I spent a little time discussing the different methods of creating a mask and where that axis is placed depending upon how you created your mask. I'm going to leave the tracker marker exactly where it's at because I'm pretty sure this is going to work perfectly. I'll come down to the editing panel where you see the button that reads Analyze. It's set to Forward. I click Analyze. Flame will go through the 39 frames and track the mask to follow the movement of the guy. I click the Return button. We come back out of the tracker, and we can see that the mask has been animated and tracked perfectly for us. But as I scrub forward, we can see when we get to the later frames, because the mask was created when he was partially off of the frame, our mask is going to need to be animated or adjusted. Well, that's what's great about the mask and the workflow with the tracker is the control over the individual control points of the mask and the tracking that is part of the axis are independent, so we can adjust them independently. So let me go back to look at the axis control, and you'll notice when I select the actual axis that we just used with the tracker, there are keyframes on every single frame, which was generated by the tracker. You can also see the keyframes in the position values for X and Y. I don't really want to animate the mask itself. I want to animate the control points of the mask. But just for reference, if you did want to animate or alter the mask as an object itself, you don't want to mess with this axis here because you've got your tracker data that's been applied to that. There's several different ways of doing this, but my recommendation would be go back to your node bin, take another axis, drag it into the scene, hold the shift key, you can kiss and connect the top axis. Now you're building the relationship. This new axis is obviously independent of that tracking data. So if you did want to alter or change the mask itself, that's how I would recommend doing it. We're not going to do that. I just wanted to show it to you. So let me throw that axis away. I'll click on the mask itself in the viewport. First thing I'll do is turn on auto key. So we'll start creating keyframes with any adjustments that we make to the mask. Also, while we're discussing animating the control points, I want to show you how you can animate and manipulate multiple control points at one time. Yes, of course, I can hold my control key, and I can region select all of these control points right here, and then I can just grab one of them, and I can move them around to animate them. But if you need further control of all these control points at one time, come down here in the UI. You'll see where it reads Edit Box. When I click on that, you'll notice this box now is formed around those control points. And not only can we come in here and manipulate the X and Y position, we can rotate them, we can scale them, we can do many things to the mask control points at one time as a group. And then if I go back to the first frame with the box still selected, I can go and manipulate this, change its position, scaling, whatever you need to do, you will be affecting all those control points. And then when you're done, just disable the edit box option and you can go and select other control points and finish your mask. We'll stop this video right here, but in the next video, we're going to continue working with our GMAS tracer and finalize the mat that we're creating.